Right, uh, here it is. This is my old lathe and uh, the VFD setup I've just put on. What I've done in the previous video I've shown it is I've rewired it so that there's no mains voltages inside the actual unit. It's all handled by the control system in the VFD. The way I use this lathe is that um, I, I like having an interlock so that if you switch it off you need to deliberately switch it back on it can't just come back by itself and the way I operate my lathe is that I'll if I'm uh, needing to change a tool or whatever I just lift up the cover it operates that limit switch there disrupts the circuit and then won't restart again unless you physically press the on button so I'll just switch it on So with, with the emergency button not activated, then it's uh, in its normal state, that is a normally closed switch. The limit switch is the opposite of that. When it's up like that, it's a normally open switch. So when it's in its resting position, that closes the circuit. So the emergency stop and the limit switch are both in a closed state. On the other side of that, the uh, moment, uh, momentary on-off button here, it's a momentary switch, which, mean, which means it's only on while you press it. That's a normally open switch. So when you press it, it closes and completes the circuit. So what happens, the way I've got this set up now is... And then to stop it... And then... Once you lower the guard, it doesn't automatically come back on. That's what makes it a safety switch and that's what an interlock is. You do have to press the button again. And because it's been controlled by the actual VFD itself, the um, stop and reverse controls work as normal. You can switch happily backwards and forwards all day long without hurting the, the uh, VFD, without hurting the uh, motor. If you try to control it, if you try to control this, uh, if you try to switch all this by using the output from the VFD that goes to the motor, you will, you will ruin the motor the VF, and the VFD. They don't, they're not designed to work that way. So just quick, I think my battery's gonna go flat, so let's just quickly open this. So. I've got the bottom cover taken off just for this filming. A lot of VFDs have two rows of this green connector strip here, which means, well, they just have a lot more features and they do have features for switching, um, adding limit switches, adding interlocks, that sort of thing. This VFD doesn't, it's pretty limited, it's pretty basic. So this was how I got around it, uh, using the 12 volt output that it supplies for ancillaries. In this case, it drives the TACO and drives the relay. Um, and using the switching as per normal to, to run the lathe with that safety feature. And the uh, emergency stop works pretty much the same as it always has. You can't do anything again until you release it. The one caveat is that this particular setup, the um, although it won't run because the the latching circuit is disabled, you can still jog it. Hang on, let's just do this again, just as an example. So you can still make it turn, but only while you're pressing the green button. It won't latch on and it won't stay on. So that's a reasonable sort of compromise. I, you know, I couldn't think of any other way of doing it. So yeah, there you go. We'll go back to the computer and um, I'll try and demonstrate what the circuit looks like. Green terminals, there's a forward and reverse output. They go to the ground on the same terminal strip. So you enable 
forward or in this case reverse this the power goes or the signal goes through the port and down to the VFD ground which is that simple down there what this circuit does you take the 12 volt VFD output and that's just general 200 milliamp VFD the power supply for running ancillaries It goes along to the green momentary on button. The button in its normal state is off. When you press it on, what happens is the current goes, energizes the relay through the coil here, and goes to the ground. That enables the relay, which closes this switch so that the signal call it blue so that this signal can then make its way down to the ground as well and, and run the machine because this is only on momentarily what happens at the same time is when this button is energized and this relay is energized is this switch here is set to the close position that's closed while that button is pressed it closes that the minute that's closed the current also from here goes through the emergency stop button, which is in a closed position, through that um, limit switch, which is also closed when the guard is down, back up, through this now closed relay, and back to the coil. So it effectively creates a loop and keeps the relay on. The minute you disconnect this the circuit here or here, what happens is say this one is disconnected. You've let you've already let this button go. So that's only connected while you're holding the button. So you've let that go. The, the relay is latched and we're still getting power to the coil, it's still running. The minute you, you um, disconnect this circuit with one of these buttons, say this one, power stops going power stops going to that relay and everything is off again. The relay de-energizes, the switches go back to open and it turns off. That's basically how the how the circuit works. If you try to use any sort of switching that's on the output side of the VFD, it will kill it. It will kill the motor, it will kill the VFD or both. They're not designed for it. You cannot have uh, the three phase um, connected and disconnected uh, at the motor this is the only way I could think of to do it. There are other VFDs with more features that have separate signals where you can wire them to a limit switch or wire them to um, a safety switch or whatever, and that will also stop the VFD. This way, my uh, VFD didn't have any of the, those features, and it, this way I can use the existing buttons um, on, the, um, on the lathe. The other thing is that you can use this to add limit switches on a VFD run mill, for instance, like either side of the table you have a limit switch so that when the um, when the lathe or the, sorry when the mill table reaches a certain point it stops the machine. Uh, you can also do the same thing on a lathe where you can add 
another one of these same switches that I've got on the uh, guard. You can edit uh, a switch somewhere on the bed to stop the machine. As a safety thing, if, you, if you're running an automatic feed and you know you miss it, it'll still turn off in time before you have a serious crash. So um, that's it basically. Um, I hope it's useful to, to somebody. Uh, it took me a little while to work out how to do this, but I'm glad um, I found a solution. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching.